John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yep. Yep. He, he being a personal pronoun for the Word, would be Jesus, of course. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. Notice that word light. Mm -hmm. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Mm -hmm. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light, capitalized, meaning Jesus, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, John, but was sent to bear witness of that light, Jesus. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming in the world. Mm -hmm. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those that believe in his name. Hallelujah. 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 I wanted you to see this whole idea of Jesus being the light. Yeah. All right, Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning, walking in the light. We're talking about seeing clearly in this life which none of us could see clearly in this life until Jesus came. Amen. Amen. Not even the Jews could see clearly in this life until Jesus is the light. Right. Darkness reigned until Jesus came. That's why even the old covenant was a mystery to them. That's why most of them missed it. They just didn't see it clearly because the light hadn't come. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the light. He has now shined. Mm -hmm. All right? So... Walking in the light is important for you and I. If we're going to walk in the supernatural, if we're going to walk in a spiritual place, if we're going to take part in the heavenly realm, if we're going to access kingdom living or heavenly living on earth, yes. if we're going to you know, have supernatural lifestyle, then we're going to have to walk in the light That's as right. He is in the light. Yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. All right? So the light is Jesus. Amen. But we know Jesus is the Word. Right. And so the Word is the light. Right. Amen. Isn't that right? The Word is the light. Yes. And so you and I are called and commanded to walk in the light. Amen. That means we have to walk in the light that we have. Yes. Many people want to see all these wonderful things and experience all these wonderful things, but they haven't yet been faithful in what they do know. Right. Walking in the light simply means walking in what you know. What you know to be true of God today, are you walking in that? Because you won't get any further light until you walk in today's light. Amen. Until you're faithful with what you do know, you can't be made ruler of more. Amen. Until you're faithful in the little, you can't get the much. Yeah, that's right. Until you're faithful to walk in this light, God can't give you more light. That's correct. You can't get more developed yes. in Christ until you walk in Amen. the light you do have. It's time for us to not be amateurs anymore. We don't want to be amateur Christians. It's time for us to not be amateur Christians. Amateurs, really, they don't get an audience. Amateur baseball players, there's hardly anybody watching. Professional baseball players, now we're talking. I know, I know. I'm some of you like high school ball better than I understand. I understand. It's time for us not to be amateurs with the Word of God. Amen. This, this, these end times are too important for us to be amateurs in the Word of God. Amen. That means we've got to understand things. Preachers not, need not to be amateurs anymore in the Word of God. Many preachers have great and magnificent gifts, but there's also a prerequisite of not being an amateur with the Word of God. That the man of God be perfect. That the man of God be trained. Study to show yourself approved unto God. That the workman need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. These are prerequisites for preachers. It's really prerequisites for believers. It's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to not just have a few little pieces of information from the Bible and run off and try to live life and call ourselves Christians. It's time for us to not be amateurs in our understanding. Yes. We've got to understand God properly. Amen. God's character, His nature, the way He is, who He is, what He does, what He thinks, what He says, is not up for private interpretation. Amen. It's not up for everybody to decide what they think about God. Well, I just yeah, think right. God this. Well, I just want God to be like this. Well, I just, I'm going to approach God this way. No, 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 no. He's one person. Amen. Yes. He lives in one place. 
You got to know how to get to him. You've got to understand him enough to recognize when he's talking. Recognize him enough to know what he expects of you in this moment. So we can't just run around just acting like we used to act. People in darkness run around, who cares where they are? They're in the darkness. Right? But when the light turns on, ooh, I need to get in my spot. When the light turns on, you better, it's time to act right. We need to be, we can't be amateurs in lifestyle. We can't be amateurs in the way we act like Christians. We've got to be sincere, mature Christians. Everybody's got to grow up. I realize not everybody in here is, is a mature Christian. I understand that. Well, that's why you're here. But you need to know the goal. Just like every child and every teenager needs to know that there's a goal in life. There's a goal of maturity that we're working on. You know, at age seven, you're working on your maturity here because we've got somewhere to be. You know, at every stage of your life, you've got to be in place. We can't have you behind. We don't want you, you know, we don't want you left behind. We need you developing so that you're ready to start producing at the right moment. Same thing with Christians. You've got to keep growing. You've got to have a desire in you to be really like Jesus and real close to God and mature and counted on by God. How many of you want that? To be counted on by God. So you've got to walk in the light that you know. And so... That's why we encourage you, get the CDs, learn the stuff, get it in you. This is not just to encourage you. Yes. Amen. 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 Right. Crickets? <laughs> the gospel is not just to encourage you. It will encourage you, but that's not all it's for, is just to encourage me. Just being, I just need a little encouragement so I can get through the, the week. I'm having a rough season, I need some encouragement. You need light, that's what you need. You need light. You can get encouragement from your little Facebook post. But you need light. A little YouTube video will give you a little encouragement. And I'm not opposed to that. I'm not opposed to laughing. You know, sometimes Jonah and I, I'm like, let's just laugh before we go to bed and we'll find something funny to watch. I like laughing as much as anybody. There's health in laughter. But life's a lot more uh, worth a lot. Uh, there's a lot more to life than just laughter. You got to get light. You got to walk in the light. And so, turn to Romans 13 with me. So, just, just consider walking in the light that you do have. Where have you uh, neglected? Where, where could you, uh, you know, and really, because people say, well, I just want to be successful in life. Well, we're trying to help you get successful in life. Walking in the light will make you successful. If you have any darkness in you, if you're not walking in the light, you're going to stumble somewhere. If we flipped off the lights and everybody had to leave, we would have some bumped knees. You'd bump heads with each other. You'd get in, somebody would get injured if we said, okay, I'll hustle out of here in the dark. Same thing in life. If people aren't walking in full light, they're going to bump into stuff and get hurt. That's why God's trying to shine the light of everything uh, as best He can on us. In John 12, Jesus said, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. Amen. Believe in the light that you become sons of light. You and I should be shining light everywhere. Yeah, yeah. We're the light shiners. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. But then later on, He said, you're the light of the world. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't you remember that? Yeah. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You're supposed to shine like a city set on a hill. So how can we be sons of light if we're not close to the light? Yeah. If we're not walking in the light? If we're not close to Jesus? So this is the secret, man. I mean, these, there's some commitments that you and I have to make as Christians to be in the light. Have you gone through that phase of your Christianity yet? I can tell you believe in Jesus because you're here. And you haven't bolted. And you can't because the ushers already locked the doors. You know, we already got them locked on you. A lot of people believe in Jesus, but the truth is there's some commitments this Christian life has with it. Have you gone through that phase where you begin to Give it all. Amen. Where you begin to <laughs> learn it all. Where you begin to say, I'm going to do it all. Yeah, yeah. Where you take a scripture and say, ah, I need to be an example of that. Yeah. And not just pick your favorites and, and leave your other ones on the shelf. But I'm talking about just saying, okay, oh, here we go again. I'm going to have to, have to drop something else. Yeah, you got to drop something else. If you're going to pick up the real deal, you got to drop something else. I don't have time to do my, my analogy, but you know, you got a bunch of clutter in your hands, but you want Jesus too. 
could you just just kind of just kind of fit right here, Jesus, if you could? I just got a lot going on here. Just just right here. Hey, why don't you start dropping some of the stuff that's not right and it's all about you? And all of a sudden, you'll have plenty of room for Jesus. Romans thirteen verse eight says, "Oh, oh, no one anything." except to love one another, for he who loves ha another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, shall not murder, shall not steal, shall not bear false witness, shall not covet. And if there's any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. So there's some key elements there. Uh, love, walking in love, walking in love, walking in divine love. And do this knowing the time that it's, it's high time to awake out of sleep. Underline that. Awake out of sleep. Awake out of sleep. For, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Hallelujah. Everybody say cast off, cast off. the works of darkness. The works of darkness. And put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day. Not in revelry and drunkenness. Not in lewdness and lust. Not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice it's an armor of light. You need armor in this life, don't you? People wonder why they're getting beat up. You don't have your armor of light on. You're still stuck in darkness. Even though you believe in Jesus, you have been stuck in darkness. When you meet Jesus, you do have to go into the room. Crack that door for me. Is that light? Crack that door for me. A little bit more. There's light in there, but you've got to go through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you meet Jesus, you've got to walk on in, in through the door here. You've got to go with Him and you've got to live in light. Thank you, sir. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me read several scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 says, But even if our gospel is veiled, the 2 Corinthians, New Testament, not far from Romans. But even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. So the opposite of blindness, I mean the opposite of light would be blindness or darkness whose minds the God of this age has blinded who don't believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who's the image of God, should shine on them. Amen. And that's why when I pray for the lost or when I want to pray for somebody that, you know, we're trying to get saved or some family member, I always address the darkness. The God of this world has blinded people yeah, right. to the light of the gospel. He's blinded them. It's like wearing a mask. There's light all around them. Christians are living all around them. The gospel's being piped all around them, but they're blinded. They can't see and hear because of the darkness. So you command the darkness to leave them, at least for a brief moment, so the light can shine and God can get to them. Until light shines, they can't make a logical choice for Jesus or not. So when you pray for the law, your lost loved ones, you're, you come against the darkness. I command the darkness off. Satan, turn them loose so the light can shine. Now God, shine the light. Rather than just pray, oh God, save them, God's already done everything to save them. Now it's a matter of you interceding and getting that darkness off of them so that they can make a cognizant, cognizant choice for Jesus or not. They may not choose Jesus, but they need a moment of clarity to hear the gospel. It's all about light versus darkness here. You know, we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son, which is the kingdom of light. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I got translated out of darkness. Yeah. How many of you were in darkness before you got saved? Oh, yeah. Everybody, please raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, if you got saved as a three or four or five year old, maybe you, 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 you don't recognize what darkness really is, which that's a good thing. But I don't know about you, but I, got, I was in darkness for many years and uh, it kept getting darker and darker and darker, but I didn't know it. Yeah. I didn't know it. All of a sudden I realized there's nothing really good happening over here. These people aren't all that great. They're getting worse on me. <coughs> you know, I had Jesus in my heart at a young age, but then you, you, you step back into the dark room, right? Yep, 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 yep. 
And I recognize these, these people are getting a little worse on me here. And, uh, hmm, I don't seem to be getting any closer to God. Hmm, uh, something's going on here. So I began to seek God and learn a few things. And all of a sudden, I made my commitment to Christ. And all of a sudden, the light came on. Amen. And I began to understand the ways of the world, the ways of God, where I was, who I was, who I wasn't. In the darkness, I was looking for the perfect woman. I mean, like most single people do. Guys looking for women, women looking for guys. That's how it works. And I was looking for the perfect wife in the darkness. How are you going to find the perfect wife in the darkness? Good luck with that one. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of groping and wondering about somebody. The analogy works. And you just beat yourself up, beat everybody else up, ruin everybody's life, ruin your life, hurt people's souls, hurt your soul. That's all it does in the darkness there. The light came on and I'm still thinking, man, I want the perfect woman. And I looked at myself and thought, what perfect woman would want this? You know, you think even if you're in the world, you think you're pretty, pretty tight, you know, pretty tough, pretty cool, pretty, I'm good, you know. But the light came on, I'm like, oh, what kind of good woman would want me? I have got some work to do. So I started, you know, going after godliness and seeking how to be a right man and a right husband and a real Christian. And, you know, I want one of these type women, so I've got to be one of those type men. And that takes a little time. There was, there was no way that I was prepared. I could tell. I didn't even know how to talk. I had to talk, stop talking for about, about three months. I stopped talking. Because when you're a brand new Christian, you don't know how to talk yet. You need to recognize that. When the light shines, if you let the light shine bright on you, oh, it'll be real clear. A lot of times people don't want the light. Jesus said the reason people don't want the light is because they like the darkness. But you, Mr. and Mrs. Christian, you need to like the light and come to the light so you can have everything exposed, get it on the table so you can clean the table. And if you'll let that happen to your life, man, you'll be a successful Christian. You'll feel strong. You won't be such a wallering, wishy-washy, fence-riding thing. Nobody's happy riding fences, right? And so I got over and recognized I have work to do. And so I started sharpening up. And that's what we should all be looking for. Now, after I had made that big Big transition, just to, I mean, I didn't do a whole lot. All I did was let myself get baptized in water, and in my heart I committed, and I came up clean. I came up free from the world, free from sin, free from the devil, free from wrong desires. And, man, I'm telling you, my whole life looked godly, at least from the outside. And in that process, some friends of mine at a church wanted, wanted to go back. Well, they wanted to go, I'll tell you the story. They wanted to go country dancing. They were kind of getting into country dancing. Some of these Christians I was hanging out with. Well, I had come out of country dancing. I had come out of those clubs. That was where my darkness was. And I would come out. And I thought, well, you know, I'm a Christian. And I, I can go. I'm not going to be drinking beer, that's for sure. But I, I can go and, uh, you know, I'll go with them. And so I went with them. And for the first time in my life, I'm walking through and I'm seeing darkness on everybody. Yes. I couldn't, but it was just so unbelievable. It was like, whoa, they're dead. Everybody in here is dead. Dead unto God. Just veiled, lost. I'm, I'm walking, I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking, they're all in darkness. Wow, I can see it now. <laughs> and about an hour into it, I told one of them, I said, I'm out of here. I, I can't be, this isn't my place anymore. I, the, the, like I say, the only time that you ought to be doing those type things is if your plan is to go to the DJ, get the microphone, preach the gospel. <laughs> Other than that, you have no business in there with all the dead people. Well, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink. Well, what if you're standing next to one and somebody you've been witnessing to sees you and thinks it's yours? Give no appearance of evil. Don't take any chances of being a stumbling block. This is real Christians. This is how real Christians think. This is how, this is how mature Christians, non-amateur Christians, this is how we think. Well, Jesus ate and drank with the publicans and sinners. Yeah, and he always held the table. He always drove, drove the conversation. He wasn't, hey, everybody. 
He's real serious about things. Trying to get to them. Trying to get to If you're really trying to get to people, get to them. And then get out quick. Because, you know, about halfway into the night, man, you, you, you've lost your influence. Yeah. They're under somebody else's influence. You've, you've lost yours. You might as well leave. Anyway, if you think how dark it is, if you, this is the, really it's a great image of how the world is. Uh, has anybody ever been into a bar or a club? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> if you're ever in a bar or a club at night, I mean, they got the lights flashing, the smoke going, and all this stuff going, and it's just fancy, and wow, it's amazing. It's so beautiful. <laughs> kind of like Vegas. Oh, oh, it's just so wonderful. But if you go in the daytime when they're all cleaning up and they got the lights on full, you're like, oh, I was sitting there. Oh. <laughs> you see all the stains and all the nastiness and, oh. When you can't smell the cologne and the perfume, any, any, the perfume anymore in the cologne, all you smell is the alcohol and the sourness. Oh. Yeah. Right. Granted, I have a little bit too much knowledge there. <laughs> but I'm just trying to tell you that that's what it's like. The darkness covers up all the nasty stuff. Right. When the light comes on, you're supposed to recognize things. Say, oh, I'm going to walk in the light here. Yeah. Let's get out of this dark, ugly place. Let's go over here in the light and let's start cleaning up. Amen. It's okay for Christians to clean up. Amen. Amen. Sure. I know the blood makes us clean, you know, technically and theoretically the blood makes you clean. But there's some working out your salvation. There's some checking yourself out in the mirror that you have to do and I have to do. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes. That if you, the, the Bible is like a man beholding his face in a glass and then straightway forgetting what manner of man he was by not looking back in it. No. The Bible is the mirror. And if you're not looking in the Word of God and if you're not a student of the Bible particularly the New Testament, you'll forget what you look like. You won't recognize you got dirt on your face, mud on your face, big dis... Second <laughs> Corinthians 4, verse 3. I already read that already. Verse 6. 1 Corinthians 4, 6, For it is the God, it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Notice that. Light of the knowledge. Verse 7, But we have this treasure, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What does that mean? That means in this body we have this treasure that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5, about 20 pages to the right. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. Ephesians 5, 8. For you, once, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Notice here. Notice what it said. It didn't just say you were in darkness, though you were. It says you were darkness. Yeah. You're, you were called dark. You and I were called darkness before we got saved. We were the darkness of the world. Unsaved people are the darkness of this world. Right. Ruled by the prince of darkness. That's right. That's it. The rulers of the darkness of this age. Remember that? The rulers of the darkness of this age. Every unsaved person is more or less governed by a ruler of the darkness of this age. Amen. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Notice that. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. The grace and righteousness that we preach allows you entrance into the presence of God without merit. Amen. You understand? Yep. The grace and righteousness by faith that we preach means you get to enter God's holy presence without any good deeds whatsoever. Amen. Simply by faith alone. Amen. But you still need to find out what's acceptable to the Lord. Amen. The grace and righteousness that we preach doesn't mean you just stick your head in the sand and live your life like you want to. Right. No, you and I are called to find out what is acceptable to the Lord. Verse 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, 
but rather expose them. For it's shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by what? Light. By the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, which is in dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. That's right. Stop there. You can read the rest for yourself. It's good stuff, isn't it? Amen. It's showing us how we used to be and how we ought to be. Amen. It's showing us our, our, our commitment. It's showing us our, our call to higher living. It's showing us our call to walking circumspectly. It's calling us to wake up from sleep. You know, when you're in the darkness... In, in, in your bed and somebody turns on the light, they become your enemy real quickly. <laughs> you recognize that's why sinners don't necessarily like you yeah. at first. Yes. You start flipping the light on them while, while they're in darkness. They're like, stop that, man. Yeah. I'm enjoying my life. Yeah. Right. I, I like my sleep. I, I don't mind being dead to God. Now you stop that. But if you'll do it just a little bit here and there, over time your eyes get adjusted. So don't stop your witnessing. Don't stop your light shining. Recognize, though, that at first it's going to be a little blaring to people. So be, be sensitive to that so you can get them. You don't want them hating you. So just give them a little glimpse every once in a while so that they go, What was that? Hmm. I, guess, I guess it was nothing. What was that? I guess, it, I guess it was nothing. Come on, you're the light of the world. We're lights in the world. We're supposed to shine. We've got to spread this gospel. We've got to spread this love. We've got to show people who God is. We're the living, walking, breathing epistle, letter of God. Rather than run around giving Bibles to people, why don't you just show them what Christ looks like? Right? And when they seem halfway interested, hand them a gospel tract that shows them the plan of salvation. Or yank them by the shirt collar and throw them against the wall and tell them that they need Jesus. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Amen. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter's towards the back. 1 Peter's right before 2 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but look at the last sentence before verse 9. It says, they stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. Verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's, who's the holy nation? It's not the United States of America, contrary to popular belief. The holy nation is the church, the body of Christ. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into what? Into His marvelous light. Who were once not a people. We once were not a nation. The church was not once a nation. Once we were not a nation. But now we are the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Stop there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to 1 John chapter 1. A few pages to the right. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message which we've heard from Him and declare to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Amen. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we, do, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Stop there. Notice, in God there's no darkness at all. So let me, let me assure you of this. In, in God, there's no darkness of all. If you abide in God, 
you won't have any darkness in your life. If you have any darkness in your life, you're not quite abiding fully. And it's not to put you down. It's, not, it's, it's to help you self-analyze your own life and decide what light am I not walking in. I need to be. It could be just as simple as uh, you've got to forgive your neighbor. You've got to forgive your brother. Right? That's a command. That, that's an absolute spiritual truth. So if you're in some darkness, you need to look at that one. I mean, you, there's a bunch of things you can look at. But forgiving, if you're not forgiving someone, you're in darkness. And you're not going to experience the fullness of God. Rather, you're going to experience some darkness in your life. Amen. If anybody feels hopeless, if anybody feels hopeless, it's a lack, it's a lack of light problem. Okay? You're not walking in light somewhere. You're missing some things. If you're sad and depressed, hopeless, you're missing some light. This is your, these are your answers. Now, what do you do about it? Well, get some light. Amen. What do you mean get some light? Well, get some word in you. Yes. Psalm 119 says, The entrance of thy words give light. Yes. It gives understanding to the simple. You need to get some understanding and start living by principle. You need to start paying attention to every jot and tittle of the New Testament. All the little details of Christian life. Start doing those things. What do you mean? Like, love your enemies. Amen. Bless those that curse you. Amen. Do good to those that use you. Pray for those Amen. that despitefully abuse you. Amen. Right? Yes. Christians still are in this habit of retaliation and, and vengeance. And, right. well, you know, well, I'm not going to let them do that to me. <laughs> Christians still get that little face. Oh, oh, you've... you've You've not listened to the love walk messages very much. You've let them just kind of glide over you when we call you to God's love. If you're angry and cynical, you've lost some light. If your life is, if you're just angry at everything, cynical about everything, finding the negative, you're not, you're not in the light enough. You're not walking in the light. You're not walking in the light. And, and I'm very sorry to have to tell you that, but I have to tell you that. And I'm glad you're not in my office, me telling you this, because you don't know who I'm talking to. I, I don't even know how I'm talking to. But saying the truth is important for you to, to put this on your list of, you know what? I'm missing, I, I'm not walking in what I know. In the but then at night you're praying, oh God, please help. But you're not walking in the light. Oh, God, what do I do? But you're not, he's not going to tell you. He's not going to shine the flashlight on the next step if you are not on the step he wants you on. It's a process with God. He doesn't tell you the whole thing. He doesn't let you see the whole thing. He needs you, shine, he needs you stepping in what he has shown you. He needs you walking in what you have, what he has shown you. God doesn't say, well, let me shine light here. And if you don't like that, then I'll, I'll give you some options. We want to skip all the hard parts and skip all of our character falls and get on into the blessing of God. If you're judgmental all the time, you've missed some light. If you're lonely, you've missed some light. Single people get lonely. If you're, if you're that, then you just need to get closer to Jesus. If you'll walk in the light as He is in the light, you won't have some of that loneliness. You'll be fulfilled. Single people, you need to be fulfilled yes. without a spouse. Amen. You, need to have a, you need to have joy and glory all the time, even as a single. Amen. And until you get there, there's no next step for you. A lot of times people make all these crazy decisions to, to try to fill some gap in their life, whether it's money or needing a spouse or something. You're just missing light. Amen. So if you want the real supernatural lifestyle with God and experience His presence and His holiness and His, all the good stuff that we can have now in this earthen vessel, you're going to have to walk in the light. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. There's principle after principle of you be content in whatever state you're in. Amen. Whether it's Texas or California. No. <laughs> whatever, whatever place you're in in life, you be content. If you're married, you be content. If you're single, you be content. 
I mean, over and over again. You be content with whatever you got, be content. If you got a little, you be content with a little. If you got a lot, you be content with a lot. Isn't that right? If you're feeling guilty for something, you're not walking in the light. If you're feeling guilty for something, you're not walking in the light. That's right. Yeah, but I, I know God forgives me, but I just, man, you just don't even know. You hush that up. That's right. God, God says if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And then He'll forget it. He'll forget your sin. And so you, if you're feeling guilty, you're not, you're not, you're not believing that scripture. You're not believing that scripture. You're not believing Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. There's no reason to feel guilty. There's no judgment and condemnation if you're in Christ. Yeah, but you just don't know, man. I've just been... You better hush that up. You're not walking in the light. And it's going to rob you of all your faith, all your love, all your joy. If, you feel, if you're going to try to go through this life feeling guilty, it's going to rob you. You need to know the blood of Jesus, that it's enough to clean your conscience and stand you upright and allow you entrance into the presence of God. Now, we admit you, you need to stop sinning. Yeah. Amen. We can admit you need to stop sinning. So get the power of God in you, get the grace of God in you, start doing the Bible, start resisting the devil, etc., etc., etc. Start using your authority. There's some things you need to do to get out of the sin. Yeah, I admit that. But let the blood of Jesus be your guilt eraser, okay? Amen. If you're confused, you, you need light. If your prayer is not getting answered, it's not God. You, you need more light. Yeah. If you're disappointed in life, you need more life, light. Right. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are we in 1 John? Did we already read that? Yeah. We already read that. No, we didn't read this. Where are we at? Okay, we hadn't read 5-7. 1 John 1, 5, 7. I mean, 1 John 1, <laughs> verse 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. Notice, the, notice how it connects this. If we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Amen. This is a good one. If we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. If you have no fellowship with Christians on a regular basis, you're not walking in the light. If we walk in the light, you'll have fellowship with one another. That means you'll like one another. You'll want to be at church together. You'll want to do Christian things centered around Jesus together. I'm not talking about just your little family members. Well, my son, he's a Christian. All my relatives, you know, they're all saved, so we just do weekend stuff together. Look, if, if, if you're not interested in fellowship with Christians, you're not walking in the light. If you walk in the light, we'll have fellowship one with another. Interesting, isn't it? Somebody that wants to be a Christian at home and never go to church because they hate religion, they got hurt, blah, 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 blah. I'm just not religious like all that. I don't know. They're not in the light. They're not walking in the light. They're walking in some darkness and they're going to experience some bumped knees in life. They're just like a fake Christian. They might, go, they might make to heaven their fake Christians. Fake versus real. Fake Christians say they love Jesus, but what they mean is I love Jesus' head. I don't like his body. I love you, Jesus, your head. I love your head, Jesus. If, if you love Jesus, then you love his body. That means you love church people. You love wonderful church people. You love not so wonderful church people. I, just don't, I don't go there because all the hypocrites. It's the body of Christ who's all trying to get fixed. Hint, hint, you need some fixing. 
You show up and we'll add the number to the hypocrites. <laughs> what, they, what they mean is I don't want to try to get any better, so I'll just remain bad. Anyway, I know I'm picking on people, but <clears throat> come on, we gotta we gotta do this right. We wanna please God. This all this life is all about pleasing God. Amen. Come on, when are we gonna please God? This Christian life has all sorts of things to it. Pleasing God ought to be first. On, you get saved and you want to please Him. If you ever meet Jesus, you're going to want to please Him. If you ever really get close to Jesus, you're going to think, oh man, i got to please Him. He's so wonderful. I just want to please Him back. Thank you for joining us for the preaching of God's Word. We trust that your faith and your love for God is stronger than ever before. Chaz and Joni Stevenson have a New Testament vision of spreading the full gospel of Christ around the world, helping unbelievers meet Jesus Christ, and building strong Christians who can impact their world, and are doing so by preaching the uncompromised Word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit. To join us in that vision, please consider an offering to help with media costs, or an offering to simply show the value of the spiritual things you have received. You may give online, by mail, or by phoning in with a credit card. If you're in Houston, Texas, and looking for a good home church, Pastors Chaz and Joni invite you to a spirit-filled, life-changing service at Houston Faith Church, where we're certain you'll experience the love and goodness of God in a real and powerful way. For more information about God, Houston Faith Church, or Stevenson Ministries, please visit us on the web, where you can now watch services via live streaming and find many other life-changing resources, or download our Houston Faith phone app.